Hey, I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Ron Shake, who is the founder, former chairman and CEO of Panera Bread, Au Bon Pen. What's the other brand? You've created three iconic brands. Kava. I've Kava. Not created it, but you I've created it. No, I haven't created Kava. But you're you're the you're the uh, lead investor and current chairman. Yes, of that's Kava, correct. and through Act Three Holdings, you're investing in a number of different properties. And of course, you're the author of. We have the book displayed right there. Know what matters? Lessons from a life of transformation. Um, good to see you. Good to see you, Diane. So I want to go back to Act One because I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. You were at Clark University in yes, Worcester. Yes. And you were kicked out of a convenience <laughs> store for allegedly shoplifting, and that was the how you got your start. Talk about that. Well, ironically, I ended up on the board of that company a decade later. But, but literally, I was political. I wanted to change the world. And I was treasured the student body. We came back from that experience and said, the heck with these guys. Let's create our own nonprofit convenience store. We taxed the student body. We raised the money, and there was no one to open the store. And I took a summer, I built the store, I ended up staying in Worcester, um, and when it came time to run the store, I took on the role of manager. And I must say, Diane, for someone who doesn't dance, for someone who doesn't sing, I discovered running the store was the most creative thing I had ever done in my life. It's a live performance art, yeah. and I loved it. The well, that's the customer experience. I, I want to clarify before we move on. Um, first of all, did you or did you not shoplift from that store? I definitively did you not. You did not. Shoplift. So this was was this Schadenfreude, like in a way, or or what's the right term? Revenge. What made you decide yes. I want to set up a, a store across the street from these guys who kicked me out? Quite honestly, it gets to the thesis of the book. Find where there are opportunities, where there are needs. It was very clear that these folks at Store 24 were not serving us. They were coming from a very different They were vilifying of, you. They were vilifying us, and they actually were abusing us. And I came back and said, there's a powerful need. We don't need them. We could do this on our own. What I think of you in the same sort of breath as as a Colonel Sanders or a Ray Kroc. You've been a pioneer. They're all dead, Diane. No, in the same breath, I said, yes. here's why. Not Nothing to do with your health but much more to do with the, you were a pioneer in the whole fast yes. casual space. What was the aha moment for you with Panera? Well, there were several aha moments, but, but the aha moment that really led to the, uh, the founding or the creation of fast casual was, was a two year, uh, was, a, was an aha moment coming in two years of, of listening tours and being out in the marketplace and hearing. And what became clear to me is the alternatives at that time were fine dining and fast food. And one out of three consumers, you could see it in their faces, you could watch it in their eyes. They walk into fast food and, and, and they would almost be embarrassed. They didn't feel good about it. You feel themselves. unhealthy just looking at the menu? Oh, and they, they actually felt diminished, depleted. You know, they'd walk in and see tables that were bolted to the floor. They'd see employees with paper hats on that were really extensions of the cash register. And it was very clear that there were some group of consumers that wanted something more. And we began to imagine that if we gave them real food, environments that engaged them, if we, if, we, if we served the food through associates that actually cared, we were able to change the currencies. The currencies of fast food were a lot of food for not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The currencies we imagined were giving people a sense of their own self-esteem, something they felt better about experiencing for a bit more money. And what's very interesting, Diane, and one of the things I argue for in the book is, is, is really to search for what are the deeper trends, separate the wheat from the chaff, mm -hmm. to separate the signal from the noise. And the deeper trend we saw was a multi-decade trend. It was a drive for specialness. Post-World War II, all consumer products were local. All of that morphed into these oligopic industries, mm -hmm. um, coffee, Folgers, and Maxwell House, um, beer, Anheuser, Bush, and Miller, um, uh, uh, Coke, and Pepsi. And by the early 90s, in every major consumer category, people wanted to feel special in a world in which increasingly they were not. And you saw the development of specialty coffee, the development of specialty beer, craft beer, yeah. the development of specialty beverages. And it was very clear to me there was a powerful opportunity in specialty food 
food that elevated people, that was made in a way so different than what fast food was doing. And that, that vision um, is what led to, I think, an understanding of the power of fast casual. And that vision is today a $100 billion segment. And Panera, quite frankly, was built as a poster child for that understanding and that vision. 